Hello everyone and welcome and good morning to this webinar. Um, I'm Alfonso Mangubat and I will be your webinar facilitator for this morning. Today we're going to have a really interesting topic. Um, it's going to be all about inquiry-based learning, inquiring and exploring in an online learning environment. I hope that you'll enjoy today's talk about inquiry learning. And before we get started, I'll give you some time to grab a sheet of paper or grab your coffee and drink that early cup of coffee in this morning, in this fine, fine morning. Okay. Now, before we begin, I'd like to share with you an overview of what we're going to be talking about this morning. So our objectives really are to unpack the idea of what inquiry learning is all about. We're going to also look at what does it look like inside the classroom, and I'll be sharing with you some examples that I've used or I've done inside my classrooms, and also some examples from teachers um, whom I've collaborated with in the past. Lastly, and just before we end for the Q&A, we're also going to talk about how does it look like in an online learning environment. Now that we're shifting to this um, form of learning in the new normal, it's also important for us to take a look at what inquiry learning looks like as we're transitioning to an online environment because we'd have to do away with a lot of the things that we'd normally do. But if with proper planning and really thinking about how students would benefit from this type of learning, then they would be able to, we would still be able to conduct an inquiry class online with a purposeful, meaningful learning for our students. Now, are you ready to begin? Because I am. Okay, let's start. So the first question in this whole webinar really is all about what is inquiry learning? And before we even unpack that idea, I'd like to share with you also how I got started with inquiry learning. So it was back in 2012 when I started teaching. Um, it was my second year of teaching and I was exposed to this form of learning through my employment at an international baccalaureate school here in the Philippines, an IBPYP school. And in the IBPYP program, they make use of inquiry learning. And initially, I did not really like um, the notion of students being at the center of the discussion. I did not like being the one on the side, um, being the facilitator and not the instructor, because it was totally new for me. Um, I, would, I was never taught this in college. I did not know about this kind of paradigm or framework in teaching. And I, initially, I was hesitant. But as I went through the training and met different people, teachers who are passionate about inquiry, it soon, drew, uh, it soon grew on me that I started seeing how students responded to this kind of learning with more engagement, positivity, and enthusiasm than what I had not that, than what I had been accustomed to. And ever since then, I've really worked hard and striven to understand how inquiry learning happens inside the classroom. And even though the context might be different, I still and as much as possible, try to ensure that my classrooms are inquiry-based, really have student questions, part of it. And even when I do professional development sessions with teachers, I ensure that their questions are the more, are highlighted and become part of the learning process. And now that we have that history lesson out of the way, we can go to the real question, which is what is inquiry learning? So inquiry learning is really basically an approach to teaching and learning where questions form the basis of students' experience. If in the past, in our own lesson planning or unit planning, we would have our essential understanding and then we would have our essential questions. Now, those essential questions would form, usually form the basis of what would, of the direction of our lesson. Now, in an ordinary classroom, we would pose those questions at the start of the unit or at the start of the topic, and that would really be the sole purpose and objective for both teachers and students. But what if in an inquiry classroom, 
we not only have the teacher made questions, our essential questions, but what if we incorporated those questions that our students also have? So this is what happens in an inquiry classroom. We don't discount the questions of the students because these questions are innocent, raw, and really filled with a lot of potential for them to take ownership of their learning. And when we integrate those questions, we make them a part of the process of creating those learning experiences and engagements. And by integrating those questions, our students then become more curious. They become explorers and they start thinking about the possibilities. They wonder about what value does my question have in this unit and how can it be used to drive our inquiry to make learning meaningful, not just for the teacher, but also for me. And in a way, it also allows them to really take ownership of what they are learning as a way they become creative in the way of thinking and doing and presenting their understanding as well. And so that's really what inquiry learning is all about. It's putting those questions at the back of our students' head at the forefront of our classroom. Even though we have those questions in mind, it's still important for us to put those questions, those wonders, those tensions and provocations our students have so that they could drive the lesson and make it meaningful for them. So now that we've defined what inquiry learning is all about, let's now take a look at the different models of inquiry learning. So in the past, I've had experience and I've also read some of the, um, the different models of inquiry and I've seen some schools use the five E's approach of engage, explore, explain, elaborate and evaluate. And if you'll take a look at your screens right now, um, they have those different um, explanations and descriptions of what happens, of what happen in, happens in an inquiry learning classroom. So we have student engagement with a challenging situation that leads to an investigation where prior knowledge is challenged and new ideas are created. And as they go along in the process, they explain what's happening. They make their thinking visible. They share that with their other classmates as well. And, at, and as they explain, they further elaborate and go deeper into those situation where knowledge is deepened and extended. And at the end, they reflect on the entirety of the process. And so that's what the five E's inquiry model approach does. And I've seen how some schools have used this very quite effectively in their science classes or even in their social studies classes. Okay. Um, let's also take a look at the work of Trevor McKenzie in his book, Dive Into Inquiry, where he shows us the pathways that students take as they go through their inquiry journey. They have the different essential questions that leads to a proposal and plan of action of how they want to go with their inquiry. And then it, with that plan of action, they begin exploring and research. And along the way, they could reflect and revise their questions and also their own exploration and research, leading them to collect more learning evidence and also more um, more reflection and revision as they go along the way. And moving towards the end of their inquiry journal, journey, they create authentic pieces of um, their understanding and also their own um, models or demonstrations of what they've learned. And they share that in their community. It is the public display of their understanding. Okay, apart from that, there are also different types of inquiries that I'd like to focus on. And here we have the different types of student inquiry, which Trevor McKenzie was also kind enough to share with us in his own website. And so in an inquiry, there are, diff there are four types. We have the structured inquiry, wherein the teacher is the one who guides the students, provides them with the necessary resources and materials. He's there to ensure that to hold hands with the students and guide them along the inquiry journey that they're about to set forth. And as our students become more confident and experienced in using um, the inquiry cycle or the inquiry framework inside the classroom, then there could be more of a controlled inquiry 
where the teacher then chooses the topics and they identify the resources, while students, you armed with those topics, questions, and resources, they begin floating out with their kickboards. Their kickboards are the resources that they were equipped with by the teacher to go a little deeper, to venture out into the open and to explore a little bit more. And as they become more and more adept at doing inquiry, they become, we proceed to the guided inquiry. And you can see that it's getting a little deeper. It's not so shallow anymore. And as a teacher, we choose those topics and questions and students now design their learning experience and design the product or solution that they're um, going to achieve later on, okay? And towards the end of that all, it's the free inquiry. Now that our students know this very well, they're now free to choose the topics without a reference to any prescribed outcome. And with that, our students are more independent, self-directed learning. And as a teacher, we are there just to guide them to ensure that they are nudged in the right direction and also provide them with the step ladder that you can see in the pool for them to come drop by and run their thoughts with us and share and we as teachers also use that step ladder to dip into their own inquiry pool to provide them with feedback and um guidance at, at as well okay so those are the different types of student inquiries that can happen inside your classroom. Now, for this session, we're going to take a look at one of an another cycle. And this one is by Kath Murdoch. She is an Australian educator. I've had the pleasure of meeting her in the past and um, really learning from her and her ideas on inquiry. And her inquiry cycle is based also on many, many research that she's done and um, work with other teachers in the past. And this is her cycle. It's the tuning in, finding out, sorting out, going further, and taking action. And as you can see, it's also like the five E's approach because you can see already that there are those different phases of the inquiries. And those phases also have their own title holders or placeholders that inform of us what's going to happen as they go through the inquiry as well okay so we'll be using this cycle or this framework for all throughout our webinar okay now let's take a look so here in the tuning in this is the moment or the opportunity for by which our students are given the chance to unlock their different um, understanding tap into their prior knowledge and we can do this by using different artifacts, videos, research, um, readings that we can give to our students prior to the start of the unit so that they can also tap into their prior knowledge or their previous understanding so that they can contribute in, their, in the discussion. In the tuning in, this is also the moment where we give our students time to take stock of their information or what they know and give them an opportunity to write down those things that bug them about the unit. Not necessarily bug like what irritates you, but more of like, what are the burning questions that are in your head and what are the questions that you'd like to ask so that we can inquire and explore, sorry about that, explore into this unit of ours. And so here you can see in the pictures that I have here, I have students write down their initial observations, their wonderings, the tensions and provocations they might have. Here I also have in the middle, you'd have a picture of students creating mind maps to really dissect the ideas so that they can come up with more questions for them to be able to answer. I've also used technology in the past, Padlet. Um, it's been a great help, especially if your classroom is starting to, the walls in your classroom are starting to get filled up with all of the student work. So I like to use the Padlet as a way for my students to post their initial questions or their in initial observations. And then slowly as the um, unit progresses, they can come back to that Padlet and um, re rewrite or refine those initial understanding and questions that they post at the start of the unit. So this is basically what happens in the tuning in. It's really unlocking the understanding and the um, the misconceptions that of our students so that they can generate those questions. And usually what I like to do in the, um, in the tuning in is that 
I'd like to create also distinctions of what a good inquiry question is. Um, a good inquiry question is something that you cannot just simply Google, um, like what is the capital of the Philippines or what is the capital of the United States? So those are not good inquiry questions. It's really more of the questions of like why and the hows of the, and the, to what extent of type of questions that really would drive the inquiry further. And so with these um, questions that we have, we are now able to generate a cycle or a process by which our students can really learn about what those questions are. And they investigate that through finding out. And in the finding out, this is really my favorite phase because it's where our students or where my students get their hands on learning experiences. They can do different activities such as simulations, um, experiments, outdoor activities that demonstrate uh, something that they learned in an article or in a, or in a video. And it's also a moment by which we can utilize the different or the community outside by tapping into resource speakers, inviting experts, going on field trips to help our students understand what's happening in the world around us. And in the finding out, we use a, rain, a range of resources and methods to gather information. At the same time, we also teach them the proper ways of assessing the value of the information that they gathered, ensuring them that um, ensuring that they don't just simply go to any website or access any website, but actually take a look at those websites or those resources and see if these resources are actually um, authoritative or come from a credible source. And throughout the finding out, our students document their learning. And this has become, this especially becomes important because it is now part of the second or the third phase of the inquiry cycle, which is the sorting out. And as they're doing this information gathering, our students are constantly writing notes, taking drawings, taking pictures, um, conferring with their classmates and their teachers. And in the sorting out, it's really an opportunity for us and the students to make sense of the information they gathered, to give them that opportunity to analyze, organize, compare, sift and sort through all that information. And no, there's no better way by using different visible thinking routines of our students and also making use of the walls in our classroom to demonstrate what we've known and gathered so far. And here my colleague and my friend, Riza Angeles was able to share some of the pictures that she's done with her students as well. So on the picture that you, on the pictures on the right, you'll see that her, stud her students were inquiring on different community spaces and how nature and the environment are affected by those community spaces. And in the sorting out, they are, her students are able to create these models and demonstrations of, um, of, what, the, of what they're learning. And so it's a powerful way to get the students to really see and show what they've learned so far, okay? The same also goes for some of my history students in the past where they made use of different materials to present their knowledge and their understanding through creative expression as well. We've also made, we've also made use of different concepts to further drive their, that, the notion that um, their understanding should be rooted on a central concept or a central idea, okay? And so we use, with all of that happening, oh, sorry, just to go back, in the sorting out, this is also a moment by which we teachers can use the time to sit down with our students and address the misconceptions that might have come up during their finding out and their sorting out. In the sorting out, or in this moment, we can also do explicit teaching, especially if we're teaching something that has like a scientific theory that is really hard for the students to grasp, or even something that has to do with math, like um, presenting different solutions to our classmates or to the students. So we give that we have that opportunity as teachers to not just direct what the resources that they'll use, but also to make sure that what they're learning is proper. Um, it isn't just based on what they're feeling at that moment, but also a moment for us to teach them as well. 
And now that they've gone through, gone through all of these um, things of doing the different sorting out, the finding out, and all of that, we have to acknowledge that at some point in their inquiries, there would be students who would be a little bit more curious, who'd like to find out a little bit more about what they're inquiring into. And we have to give them that opportunity of actually inquiring further or going deeper into the questions or going deeper into the unit itself. And so with that in mind, we, go, we use the going further stage to establish new personal pathways of interest, an opportunity for them to go deeper into that inquiry and to generate questions that would really help them. And so at this point, they could also go back to the tuning in and uh, tune into a new understanding and then find out as well. Okay. So here are some other examples that I've um, of what I've done inside the classroom. Um, here are some social studies units where my students were inquiring into the children's rights and the challenges and opportunities of, of children in this day and age. So have a, take, have a look at it for a bit. And then on the right, you'll see I had a unit on European revolutions in the 19th century. And the, there you can see that they inquired into the German, Italian, and French revolutions. And then as they got more into it, um, I, they, they were interested into looking at how different revolutions also during that period were <clears throat> influenced by these revolutions in France, Italy, and Germany. And so they would use that as a case study and then compare it against other revolutions that happened at the same time. So with all of this in mind, it's now important that we take action in our inquiries. And taking action could mean the demonstration or the public display of understanding, if we were to use Trevor McKenzie's work, the public display of understanding of what our students have accomplished. And this could be as simple like a night of the notables where they present different personalities in histories and their contribution to history. Or it could be a simple pamphlet or um, research paper on what they were on man's effects on the environment. So these are also some examples as well, wherein our students take action with the values that they've learned in the inquiry to be able to create different posters like this, Cara Frieza Angeles again, where students are creating signages for lost and found or for active campaigns for different students and uh, um, the community as well. So it's in the going further, we use the opportunity to consider different ways to apply, use, and share their learning to make a difference. It's also a moment for them to make connection back to big ideas and answer the question of now that we've known, now that we know all of this, what do we understand? And we use this part of the inquiry to evaluate the process that they've been through, to consider those unanswered questions and how they can do it in their own free inquiry time. And also consider the next steps of what they're going to do with what they've just used, of what they've learned so far. Okay. Now central to the inquiry are, is reflection. Reflection is really a point or a moment in the inquiry cycle where students take the step back and consider what they're currently thinking, to take stock of what they've known, what they know so far. And in reflection, we make sure or we give ample time for students to really tap into their thinking, to be conscious about it. And here in this part of the webinar, I'm going to present with you some of the reflection questions that you can use in the tuning in, finding out, sorting out, going further, and taking action phases. Sorry, excuse me. Um, in the tuning in, we have these different questions, like what do I know about the topic? What are my questions? What am I interested in? And these questions are designed to really evoke a response from the students to be mindful of their thinking and to th look into what is it that I know so that I can answer um, that so that I can ask questions that would help the inquiry or the inquiry go deeper. Okay, in the in the finding out, we have these different questions of what resources might I use? 
where can I find different viewpoints in this? What can I do to learn more? And how do I know if my resources are good? And as I mentioned earlier on, um, it's really teaching the students good research skills of not just using one resource, but using a wide range of resources from primary and secondary sources to even research, <clears throat> even research and video articles, all of these things and tapping into the community to ensure that our students have different viewpoints and contexts by which they can work with. So in the sorting out, it's really talking about like what information helps answer my questions or the questions of others. How, what keywords help me make sense of the information that I found? How have my questions changed? So these are the questions that we ask in the sorting out so that they can take stock of everything that they've learned so far and to really consider the information they've gathered mindfully so that they can sift through that information and see, is this information still valid? Is this information going to be useful in my inquiry? Is this information going to actually make me understand better or make other people's other people or other classmates understand um, what we're inquiring into better? Okay. Here are some questions in the going further. Have I considered different viewpoints? Have I found enough information? Especially if they're really curious about it and if they think that they don't yet have enough information, then the going further reflection questions will help tap into that need for them to understand more or to know more. How do I want to show what I've learned? It's really talking about or thinking about what's the next step now that I've known all that now that I know all of this. And lastly, action. How can I improve my learning? How did I learn best? How am I going to use what I learned to make a difference? So these are the questions that our students that or the students can use to really think about now, now that we know this, what action can I take so that people can learn and um, I can or and that the inquiry can benefit from the my inquiries can benefit the community as well. So if you're actually going to look into it, um, if you use Google search, um, you can look at reflection questions in the inquiry cycle. And there, you actually, there is a trove of resource, quest, refle resource reflection questions that you can use. And the, these, are, these are just snapshots of the types of questions that you can ask at different phases of the questions. And again, this is not just something that's prescriptive. You can also be creative. Um, you can ask questions as the as the thinking process of the students when you confer with them goes uh, goes along. Okay. So the next big question that we have is, what does it look like online? Since we've now shifted into this online learning environment, it really talks about, or we're really thinking. So if in the past we've done all of this hands-on learning, we've done um, on gone on field trips, we've been through different places and everything. How does it look like online? So here's something that I created. It's a matrix for um, inquiry learning in an online environment. Though um, I will say that this is not the authoritative matrix, or I don't suggest that you really use this all the time. It really depends on what your unit is going through. Um, when I designed this matrix, I was really thinking about what have my students have done in the past, most especially since a lot of them are experienced already in inquiry. So I just decided to create this so that it would be a guide. Um, you can use this also as a guide, but do know that there, there could be moments in your inquiries could, that could be mostly asynchronous or that could be synchronous at the same time. So here, have a take a look at it. And do know that in an online environment, actually, the finding out, um, especially if you're in your sciences and history units, um, there are many resources. Google has lots of virtual museum tours and AR and VR opportunities for students. I've also identified like the different applications that you can use um, in your inquiries. So these are just like small, number of apps that I constantly use inside the classroom. So my students are know how to use this and are aware of its benefits as well. 
So I'll give you some time to take a look at it. All right. So we're so I hope it's clear so far. Um, do know that you can use this, um, but do adopt it into your own context. Um, make be very conscious with the planning of how this inquiry matrix would look like inside your classroom. There will be moments that you can just really have synchronous classes all the time. And then there would be moments where you'd have asynchronous classes or student-based classes also. Okay. So some things to remember as we go along in this inquiry journey of ours. First and foremost, the cycle is not linear, but it's actually recursive. As you've seen in the examples I've shared, the finding out and the sorting out happens at the same time. And even as they're doing that, they could also be doing the going further as well, because as they are really inquiring deeper, they could end up going deeper into the knowledge or into, the, into finding out their questions. And so the cycle is really not linear. It's not like the tuning in, finding out, sorting out, going further, taking action. It could really just move from one way to the other. It really depends on the learning engagements that you've designed, the responses of your students, and also their readiness to understand and know more about their inquiries. And as a result of that recursiveness of the cycle, the faces tend to blur because as they're doing all of this, you also, as a teacher, have to be mindful of what are they currently doing? Is there a way for them or is there a time that we need to tune in more into that, into the, into the unit? Or are their finding outs not so good yet that we need to continue just tapping on to prior knowledge and giving, presenting them with more resources so that they have a better understanding of what we're inquiring into. Um, so it's really all about making sure that you give that flexibility and dynamic framework for our students. The cycle isn't a formula, it's very flexible. Um, you can, it will really depend on how your students are responding. It also depends on the assessments that you give and see whether the students are really ready to move forward. If not, then they can continue on with their finding out and to ensure that they really understand the concept or the big idea that you're inquiring into. So it is really it is really designed for flexibility in mind. It's not something that um, that's formulaic, but it's actually a re, um, it's actually quite flexible. And because of that, it's not a recipe, but it is a framework for our our students. I would suggest that um, if you're going to adopt this as a learning method or as an as an approach to learning then you show this framework to the students and let them know that this is the framework that we're working out. Um, you can just give this out as a PDF for the students so that at any point in their increase, they can say, they can refer back to it and know, okay, I think we're not yet sure about our information. Let's tune in to our understanding, understanding again. What do we know? What can we find out? How can we go deeper into that? So that's really, all the, the the inquiry is about it's really a framework for our students to really tap into their thinking to go deeper into that and to form their own understanding using the questions that have become the central part of your unit of your, your lessons as well and because of that um students who feel that their questions are validated and are made part of the learning journey um, they feel a sense of pride and ownership because they know that they took part in that learning as well. And so this, so now we're at the end of our, um, of our webinar, but I'd like to share with you some resources. Um, here I have a couple of YouTube videos that you can actually use or um, look up into. So if you go on YouTube, you can just type up one minute PL on inquiry cycle and you'll find my different videos that I created as well. It has the whole inquiry cycle at, at the same time. And it gives you bite-sized information and pieces of how to do these different phases of the inquiry.
Okay. Of course, I'd like to say thank you to the different references that I've made use. Cathemer Doc has always been my idol. And if you have time, um, you can buy her book, The Power of Inquiry. It's a really great book. Um, it's been my Bible in this inquiry journey. Trevor McKenzie's dive into, in, into inquiry has also been helpful as well. And so that's the end of this webinar, but the real con I'll continue on and I'm opening the floor to, the, to your questions and uh, any clarifications that you might have about this approach to teaching and learning. Once again, I'm Alfonso Mangubat and I thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope to, um, I hope to read your questions or listen in to your questions over the next few minutes. Thank you.